Hey guys, and welcome to another installment to my class overview video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about the arms and class on Albion. I'm going to go over spec lines, um, some common specs, some RA specs, um, some general strategy, and some uh, maybe some template things, template choices you want to include. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into game. I'm here on my armsman. Um, we'll go ahead and go over what spec I am, which is a, uh, a pole arm um, spec. Um, arms can go two hand or pole arm is their main damage. Um, I think most go pole arm, but you can go two hand if you want. I think pole arm just generally a little bit more popular. Um, my spec right now, 50 pole arm, 42 shield, 30 weapon, and 25 crossbow. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, things you can, differences you can go in the spec. You can drop your crossbow down a little bit to have some more weapon spec or some more parry. Um, all up to you. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the pole arm spec line though. And let's go over here and let's get, it's a little quieter up here. This guy's swinging away. So it's going to create some noise. Anyway, the first, um, style I want to talk about is the level 34 style defending, uh, sorry, defenders rage. Uh, this is going to be your anytime style. Um, it's going to be a medium damage style, low end costs, what you're going to hit when you can't hit positionals or reactionary styles. Um, pretty simple, just run up just an anytime style. The, uh, the cap right now with the amount of strength and all that good stuff that I have is 690. So we can kind of use that as a baseline to, uh, to look at how hard the other styles the arms and have, hit, um, see how hard they hit. Uh, cause against this level one mo monster, you'll hit for cap, whatever your current cap is based on your strength and your plus to skill and all that good stuff. So our cap on defenders rage is 690. So that's our anytime cap. Uh, the next style I want to get into for armsman is going to be your, uh, your side style Polaxe. That's a high damage style. Also, um, really important on this, it has a uh, 15 second um, snare on it. So this is what you'll be using to peel other tanks, um, to peel them off yourself or a friendly caster, or if you need some space, you can snare them with this and then run off. Uh, they'll be moving 40% slower. Super useful in group fights. Um, a lot of the times what you'll be doing is running around and getting uh, tanks off your casters and clerics and things of the sort. Also, it's nice to, uh, have whatever target you're hitting snared because it can't run away from you. Also, it's a hard hitting style. So we'll see how hard this hits. So this hits for 753. Um, so it's a good uh, 63 damage more than your anytime style. So you can see that this is gonna be a, uh, your harder hitting style. Um, what we'll look at next is a follow-up style to this. And that's gonna be Defender's Aegis. That's gonna be your level 50 style here. And that's a very high damage um, style listed here. And it gives you, a, it applies a bleed for uh, 20 seconds. Now, just for your um, your information, bleeds don't break mezzas or roots or snares and things like that. Um, so it's not like a dot where it'll break all of those. So you can be a little bit more uh, liberal with throwing out bleeds. Also, in the um, it's important in the small or the solo game is it cuts down the health regen um, of your targets if they are bleeding. So. See how hard that hits. Um, Defender's Aegis is going to hit for 813. So it's going to hit for a whole 60 damage more than the side style and a whole, I don't know, 120 something damage more than your anytime style. Yeah. So this is going to be your hardest hitting style on Armsman, I believe. Um, at least it's not a positional. I don't know what the positional caps are and it's hard to test those. Um, so yeah, that's going to be your main damage chain. If you get a target slammed, just run over and hit them with this chain a few times and they'll be hurting. Um, the next style we're gonna go over, Phalanx. Uh, this is super important. Um, similar to the uh, side style, it's a snare as well. High damage. Uh, we'll see how hard this hits. So uh, 743, so it's gonna hit a little bit uh, less hard um, than your, uh, your side style, but still pretty dang hard. Um, it's also great if someone's running away from you uh, maybe you're on a uh, an Eldritch or something and you're trying to kill him and he's obviously running because he doesn't want to be near you. If you're hitting back styles on him, you're hitting him, one, you're hitting him hard, two, you're also snaring him. So it's going to make sure um, that you'll stay on top of him. It's going to be harder for him to get away from you. Uh, the next style we have is going to be Defender's Revenge. And this is the follow-up to that back snare style. The interesting thing about this style is it's a very high damage um, bonus. So that's good. However, it does apply a nine second stun. So just, just have it noted that this style will stun. So if you, if you don't want to stun a target for whatever reason, say you don't want to give it immunity or whatever, 
um, maybe don't use this style, but it's going to be a hard hitting style. If you use it on a stun target, you can still, it's not going to stun them or anything like that. It'll just do the damage. Um, but yeah, if you need the stun off of it, go for it. Um, but like I said, if you don't want to stun, just be careful with it because it will stun. So let's see how hard this hits. So this hits for 808, which is quite a bit less, I think. No, okay. So the Defender's A gets the, after this, the follow-up to the side style hits for 813. This hits for 808. So as a whole, the side chain hits a little bit harder, but it's really hard to tell the difference. So either way, you'll be doing a lot of damage. Um, but if you had a choice, probably the side style for damage. But the first part back style and then the, the side style both apply a snare. So those are going to be your peel styles when you need to free up a teammate, peel a tank off of them, or if you're trying to stay stuck to a caster or support or something like that. Um, other styles in polearm, um, you have a couple more side styles and they just have other snares on them. They're not worth using. You're going to use Polaxe as your primary side chain. So ignore these other side styles. Um, other things you might consider using are going to be things like your after parry style executioner has a 16% attack speed, uh, debuff on it. And then it follows up into a, a high damage bleed style. So if you're soloing, um, you're gonna you're gonna want to hit defender or sorry executioner and uh, follow that up with defender's advance. Um, other styles, I don't think there's really much else that I would use on an armsman. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe if you can't get your parry chain off, use this defender's faith style. It's an anytime style with low damage, but it follows up into uh, defender's courage, which has a uh, twenty percent attack speed debuff. So that's good for solo. One, you apply a bleed, and then the follow-up style applies a attack speed debuff. That's if you can't get your uh, your side chain off, or sorry, your parry chain off. Um, so maybe th those are probably those are probably going to be it for it. Uh, the other um, spell or spec line that pretty much all arms are going to go with shield. You're probably going to want to stop at 42 shield. You can go higher to 50 shield, but it's not really worth it. the uh, The main style in this spec for arms is slam. What slam does is an anytime nine second stun. Just run up to the target, figure out what your slam button is, that's it. Slam him and then hit him with a side chain. Call it a day. So that's that's what you'll be doing a lot of. You'll be using slam to uh, stun targets that you want to kill yourself. Then you'll, like I said, like I did against that monster or that test dummy, slam it and then use your side style on it. You'll be using it to help um, defend your team. You'll slam something off, maybe maybe a BM's hitting your uh, your sorcerer or something. You'll hit, you'll run over, you'll slam him, and then you'll likely side snare or back snare him. So he'll be moving much slower when he comes out of slam. Um, you can do it to set up your caster. So you have a Sorkin cab in your group, and you want to slam that BM. That means they can free nuke him or not free nuke him, but they have a a, a stationary target to nuke. Uh, for nine seconds um so yeah there's a lot of a lot of things you can do with the slam it's going to give a 45 second immunity since it's a nine second stun how stun immunities work is it's the duration of the stun times five seconds so it's going to be 45 seconds as you can see here so it's going to give a long immunity um if you want to give a lower immunity and, and you can like disable them or, or paralyze them it's going to give a lower immunity if you're just trying to uh peel them like if you're just trying to like run by and stun them and peel them then use maybe one of those but I, I wouldn't even bother with that if you can get a side or back um stun off you can get a side or back snare off and then what's the point in stunning them if you can get the uh the snare off for free or without using a stun um yeah that's that's probably all we do you can use numb numb is a uh, two second stun it's a 10 second immunity timer a lot of times you can use stun or numb sorry and they'll purge it thinking maybe it's a slam or a mangle um that's an old trick that people used to fall for a lot. Not sure if people still fall for it very often, but um, maybe think about using that if you want to. Um, you can also, if you're not hasty buff or dex quick debuffed or something like that, hit a tank with numb and then quickly go to their side and side snare them and then run off. Uh, you should be able to get a, uh, a snare off in that two seconds that they're stunned if you're using a fast shield and you're not debuffed. So... Uh, if you want to think about that, it doesn't give as long of, of immunity so you can get more peels off during a fight. Um, that does it for shield line. There's another at 50 shield, there's a style. It's an after block 10 second stun, not worth using, not worth going for. Also, actually, let me, let me talk to you about shield swipe real quick. So shield swipe is a PBOE style. 
uh, really good for PvE and also pretty good for uh, group scenarios. Um, if you need to hit multiple people to interrupt, um, you can use Shield Swipe and it'll kind of swipe in a small area around you and interrupt. There are better styles to use um, if you're Battle Master to, to interrupt in an area. Um, Shield Swipe can be good if you're killing Zopets. Like say um, your sword gets Zopetted, you can Shield Swipe them all in one hit if they're stacked up and then all the Zopets are dead, your sword's free, good, good to go. That's gonna do it for shield. Um, if you if you have any other questions about things like shield swipe or um, the peeling mechanic or the, not the peeling mechanic but the peeling uh, strategy, um, how to peel well, what you need to look out for when you're trying to peel other tanks, maybe give me a comment and I can do another video on that if there's a, a big enough request for it. Um, so we'll get to that later, possibly. Um, now the next big thing is your your weapon line. Your it's gonna be slash, crush, or thrust. Um, armsman, if you go two hand or uh, pole arm, you're going to have to spec a damage type behind it. Um, the reason for that is if, if you don't do it, you're going to have insane variance. Um, I don't know if it affects your cap, but I know it affects your variance pretty hard. Um, so what you need to do is get, if you're going for max damage, is get your, um, your composite, um, whatever weapon line you're going in. So in my case, crush, get your composite crush to 51. As you can see here, mine's 47. It's not, it's not anywhere close. I'm, I'm a few points off, um, but I, I wanted to get crossbow up a little bit and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But the reason you want 51 is because that, that'll give you um, your cat variance um, for that if you're using a crush pole arm. Um, Hibernia is different where heroes can just spec um, spear or large weapon and not have to worry about subspecing, but Albion's different. It's the same thing you have to do with Paladins, same thing you have to do on dual wield classes like Mercenaries and uh, BMs and Zerkers. You have to spec sword or blades or whatever whatever weapon type you're using. So keep that in mind. Uh, whatever weapon spec you choose is dependent on a few things. One, the main one really is damage type. Do you want to be swinging crush weapons or thrust weapons or slash weapons? Uh, and those matter because different armor types have different um, resist, um, resist uh, properties, I guess. So, for example, Hib Scale is resistant to Crush, but is very weak to Slash. Uh, so if you're wanting to maximize your damage on Hib Scale, you're going to want to use a Slash weapon. Um, crush is good against Leather and Studded on um, Hib, and Thrust is neutral to everything, things like that. If you, if you want me to make a video going through the whole entire um, armor chart, I can, I can do that. But I generally go thrust on whatever I'm playing. And I'll, I'll tell you why I go thrust, because it's thrust is good against mid chain, healer, shamans, warriors, uh, Valkyries, things like that. It's also neutral to everything in hib. So you're not hitting plus or negative in hib, you're just hitting neutral. But a lot of the targets you hit um, in mid are gonna be uh, weak to you. You're not gonna be hitting hard against um, mid uh, leather and studded though, so keep that in mind. Um, but in a group situation, you're fighting Probably, I mean, every group's gonna have two healers and a shaman, so you have three targets that are gonna be weak to you. Casters are all neutral, cloth is neutral to everything. Um, you may not be hitting Zerk super hard or Savage is super hard, but solo, you'll probably wanna maybe go crush or slash because stealthers, maybe. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, also, there may be some reasons to use your one handed styles. Uh, reasons would be if you're so soloing and you wanna keep your shield out. Uh, for more defense, you can use your one-handed styles or in groups. Um, like, for example, Crush has a back snare at level level 25. You can use your one-handed snare so you can slam them and use your one-handed Crush snare instead of having to pull out your pole arm and then hang through back snare. Um, I do that every now and then, um, just if I want to get a, a quick peel, I guess. Especially if I'm debuffed. If I'm dex quick debuff or haste debuff and I'm trying to peel really quickly and maybe I miss, I slam and then I miss one or, once or twice. It's nice to have the faster attacking weapon out peeling with because most pole arms are going to be 5.7 to 6.0 speed. Your one hander is probably going to be like 4.1, so you'll be swinging faster. So if all you're doing is peeling, one hand's not too bad. Um, but yeah, for soloing, you're going to want to choose a damage line. One, whatever damage line is suitable that you like. Two, look at their uh, positional, or sorry, their reactional styles, like their after parries, their after blocks. Um, look at those and crush, slash, and thrust and see what you like. Um, if there's a uh, if there's demand for it, um, 
let me know. I can do a video covering slash crush and thrust for things like mercenary paladin, um, infiltrator, armsman. It's all the same in those lines, uh, minstrel too. But for this, I'm just not really going to get too too deep into it. But just know you'll, you'll you're mainly specking it for whatever damage type you want. And now it comes down to uh, crossbow. It's the last thing we expect here. Uh, 25 crossbow gets you this ability called snapshot. What it does is it allows you to um, allows you to move while you shoot your crossbow. Also, uh, I don't think you're interruptible too, so you can uninterruptibly shoot people with your crossbow while you're running around. This is awesome, and it lasts a minute too, so that's a, a really long time. This is awesome because in group fights, if you need to rupt someone, you can run at them and interrupt them. It's similar to a minstrel using his mez on the run, you can you can shoot people on the run. So it's great for rupting. It's great for adding a little bit of damage. Say someone's at low health um, away from you, they're at like 30% health, you can't get to them, but they're within like a thousand range or something. Just snapshot them down, run after them, shoot them your crossbow. It does decent damage. Uh, I'll show you this mechanic in action right here. So let's see, activate snapshot, and you see I'm just running around, shooting uh, this little test dummy. So I'm hitting for about 305, so that's gonna be my cap on that. And you can see I'm just running around shooting it. So pretty dang awesome. Um, so use this to interrupt, to chase things down, to kill them, to make sure um, in the solo game, say a skull tries to like insta snare you or mez you and run off, and you come out of that mez or snare or whatever, and you just chase it down to make sure it doesn't get speed. Just snapshot, it's not gonna get speed, it's gonna do damage. Um, really cool, really cool ability. Um, it's just, it's a bit cheeky too. Um, I don't think a lot of people really go for it anymore. And you can see I'm shooting that back target. You can see the range on this thing is pretty, uh, pretty dang good. I think it, it might be, uh, I don't know if it's quite 1500, but it's not that far off. As you can see, I'm shooting that one back there. Our snapshot's about to fade, but we can still shoot. Okay, we're too far at this point. Too far. There we go. So this is the range. Um, So that's, that's a little bit less than 1,500 because there's my 1,500 ground target from where I was. Um, so long range, interrupt, good way to do damage, and plus it's just fun. What you do have to give up for it though, unless you're super high rank, is that 51 composite weapon. So you can see here with my two-hander out, I only have 47 crush. Also, you probably won't be able to spec parry. Um, if you want to get um, snapshot and have some parry, you can maybe drop your two-handed down a little bit, or sorry, your pole arm down a little bit. Um, that's gonna um, decrease your damage quite a bit, so I probably wouldn't do that, uh, but it's up to you. Um, not everyone gets snapshot, but I like it, so I always get it. Um, that's gonna do it for pretty much our spec lines, but what we're gonna look at now is what armsmen and things like heroes and, and uh, warriors get for free, and that's just our heavy tank abilities. Um, there are a few that are super strong. We'll look at the first one, Taunting Shout. This one's a PV only ability. What this does, a cone taunt, it just aggroes, mo mo it gives, it increases your aggro level to, to mobs. So that's great. If you're PVing and you need to get aggro, use this. I see a lot of people trying to interrupt with this in RVR. It does not interrupt in RVR. It has no function in RVR at all. It actually doesn't even go on cooldown until you hit a mob with it. So. Don't try to use that in RV arts, literally PV only. So just keep that in mind. Uh, next, Metal Guard, and that's just a buff you're gonna throw up at the beginning of a run or whenever you die. It's a, a little buff that gives your group 3% more absorb. So it's strong, makes everyone a little more tanky. Just put it up, no big deal there. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at is Bolstering Roar. And what this does is it, um, it's a 250 radius and it deroots, demezzes, and desnares nearby in, or nearby friends. So if your group gets blanketed, they're all clumped up within 250 uh, radius, you can use this on them, and then they're all be, they'll, they'll all be out of mez. Same with the root, things like that. Uh, really strong. Um, if you use the curse set, and if you don't know what the curse set is, it's a PvE, um, new PvE campaign, and if you use three curse pieces, I think on armsmen, it's chest piece arms and maybe boots or legs, I don't know it's one of those, then you get um, an extra bonus to one of your abilities. This is the ability that's affected. It makes this range of radius, however they have it listed, a little bit wider. So you have a wider radius to uh, Demez. It's okay, it's not great. 
Um, I probably wouldn't stress it if you can't fit it in your template. But yeah, so it's just a, a PBOE DMAS, deroot, desnare. It doesn't fire unless you're in a group. It doesn't go on cooldown, so you can see me spamming it. Super strong. Use this. Um, for example, say say you're pushing a group really hard and they're pulling super hard. Maybe it's like a hip caster group and you're a, just a standard alb hybrid group, three tanks, three casters, and they root your Thurgist. And your Thurgist is going to be out of the fight for a minute and 10 seconds. That's a long time with no no um, pets out front. Or say your cleric or friar gets reared. Um, and they're pulling hard, so they're going to get left and be out of the fight for quite a long time. The sorcerer can't demez those people because they're not mezzed, obviously. There's no deroot um, unless your cleric's deroot is up. If your cleric's deroot's out, they're kind of screwed. But you can go over there and hit them with this, and they'll be out of the root, and they can continue pushing. Um, use it for roots, mezzes, whatever. Um, probably wouldn't use this to demez like another Merc or something that has debt nine stoicism because it's not gonna matter too much on him, but use this whenever you need a group member demez deroot or even a whole bunch of group members demez or deroot. The next ability, climbing spikes, allows you to let's put this on the bar, put on some spikes on your gloves here, and then you can climb into keeps. So it's great for keep sieges. Um, if, you're, if your team in your realm has a bunch of rams or something, a bunch of siege equipment, and they're knocking down a door or a wall, and you need to get in there to sort of disrupt some people, hop in on armsmen. There's little points on a keep you'll see um, that you can climb up. If you don't know what they are, um, I'll, I'll have to make another video maybe. If you, need, if, you, uh, if you don't know what they are and you want me to make a video, I'm just kind of showing you that real quick, let me know. If not, I'm probably not going to do it, but... You'll, you'll find them eventually. Just look where other infiltrators, minstrels, and arms are climbing up, and you can follow them up. Lasts for uh, 30 seconds, recast a minute, so it's up all the time. Not all the time, but fairly frequently. Go kill people in oil and stuff. Help your realm out. Next ability, Rampage. This is super strong because it gives you a whole 20 seconds. It gives you and your group, I should say, a whole 20 seconds of 100% um, chance to resist debuff spells. That includes stat debuffs and like resist debuffs, I believe. Um, so... I think this includes, yes, yeah, stat debuffs. It doesn't say, yeah, debuffs, resist debuff spells, but it doesn't say stat debuffs. Pretty sure this gives 100% chance to resist stat debuffs too. But anyway, it's super strong. Um, a lot of times people use this when they're initially pushing into a group um, just because it'll hit the whole group at that point. Um, later in a fight, it might not hit everyone, but it's just a good, super strong ability when you, uh, you know you're going to get debuffed and you want to stop that. Next ability, super strong for Armsman as far as um, their survival versus magic is an ability called Fury. What this does is it increases your secondary magic resist by 50% for 20 seconds. 15 minute reuse, so it's a long one. But uh, yeah, if, if I'm on a caster and I start nuking an arms and it Furies, I'm usually going to swap off of it because they're going to be super hard to kill. Because it literally has, it gives them 50% extra secondary resist. So that's really strong. Um, I probably need to make a video explaining how a resist works. Um, whereas primary resist are different from secondary resist. Secondary resists are generally a little bit weaker, but when you're adding 50% to something, that's still a ton. Um, also, armsmen get, and I don't know what it's called, it's either Scars of Battle or Memories of War, I can't remember, but they get a free 20% secondary resist all the time. And as you can see here on my heat resist, if you, if you can see the little tooltip over here, it says 26 and it has the dash and then the 40%. That 40% is my secondary resist. So 20 of that secondary resist is coming from my free armsman ability that gives me 20% all the time. The other 20% to make it 40% is coming from AOM9 that I have spec'd, as you can see here. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more when we get to RAs, but you get a free 20% secondary resist. It just makes you really a lot more tanky to uh, magic damage. You also get a free hit points boost just for being a heavy tank. Uh, my template sucks, so I have right now 34, 50 hit points. You'll probably have a lot more, like maybe like 3,800, maybe even 4K, depending on how much con and hits you have in your template in your RA spec. But Armsman can have a ton of hit points and a ton of resist too. So they're super tanky, obviously. It's one of the tankiest classes in the game. Armsman heroes and warriors, they all are about as tanky. Um, other things to look at. For arms and only like heavy tank abilities, that's pretty much it. But we'll look at the uh, the rank five next. No, I hope I didn't forget anything. Yeah, we'll just go start with the rank five. So the rank five is a uh, fifteen minute reuse timer ability. 
but it increases your block and parry chances by 50% for 30 seconds. And at the end of that 30 seconds, it gives you a block and parry penalty of 10%. And I'd imagine that's for 30 seconds as well. Um, so use this when you need bonus defense. And just keep in mind, it's going to give you a slight penalty at the end of it. This combo is super well with the realm ability we're going to go over in a second. So now that we're done with pretty much everything arms and get um, in spec line or for free with the rank five or the free abilities, we'll start talking about the RA specs that you need to go. First and foremost, the most important RA for an arms is going to be debt nine, determination nine. And I don't have it here because I'm PV spec, so I don't need it in PV. But what this does is it gives you 55% um, reduction to crowd control spells, things like any any casted CC doesn't doesn't count for melee stuns. You also get a free 25% crowd control reduction crowd control reduction from an ability called stoicism. Forgot to mention that earlier. Um, but these stacks, so you have essentially 80% free or CC immunity, so or CC reduction, I should say. So that's really strong. You need to be able to just walk through mezzes and roots and stuns and stuff like that. So that's going to be for a group arms, and that is for solo arms, and you might not get that until higher rank. Um, but for a group arms and debt nine, ASAP, 404, 405, get debt nine. Next, um, what I would get is this ability called dashing defense. I would at least get dashing defense one, maybe dashing defense two once you're a little higher rank. Um, the reason I would get this is because it combos so well with your rank five. So what dashing defense does is it allows you to block and parry for your group mates within, I think it's a thousand radius. So it gives you a chance to essentially put guard on them, but you don't have to be close to them. Well, you have to be within a thousand radius, but that's pretty good. The reason this is so strong with Soldier Citadel, your rank five, is because if you remember, this gives you a 50% increased chance to block and parry. And so if you use that and then use dashing defense and pull out your sword and shield and just run around near someone, you're going to be blocking and parrying a ton of their attacks. So let's say a like, Two Savage Zerker groups just pushing into your team really hard. You can't BG everyone. We'll get into Battlemaster stuff in a second. I'll explain that. But you can't peel for them. You can't guard them. You can't bodyguard them. And you just need to stop the damage um, to help them out. Just pop Soldier Citadel, Dash and Defense, and you'll be blocking. As long as everyone's within a 1,000 range of you, you'll be blocking and parrying for everyone. And they'll get the Zerkers and Savages will get an odd hit in, in every now and then. But you're going to be mitigating a ton of their damage. So... Think about using that. I don't know if a lot of people still use this, but it's an old strategy that um, people used to use like 10 years ago. It's a great one. I don't know why people don't use it if they don't, but keep it in mind if you're a group arms. And, um, another active that you might want to pick up is Purge. You probably don't want to pick up a ton of Purge, and you don't even have to pick up any Purge once you're dead nine. But this is mainly for stuns, I think. The reason you would get this, you'll probably get Purge 2. Um, purge 3 if you want a lower cooldown, but I don't think I would invest a ton of points into Purge on Armsman. But if you get slammed and you just need to not be slammed at that point, maybe you're going to get nuked down if you stayed slammed for nine seconds or someone on your team is going to die if you get slammed and you can't peel or bodyguard, uh, maybe purge that. If you get mezzed, mezzes are going to last about 10 seconds on you with that nine stoicism. If you get mezzed and if you don't come out of mez immediately and interrupt a caster or peel a tank, someone's going to die. That's when purge comes in handy. It's not a must. It's just nice. Um, another really good active on Armsman you can get, um, and you might want to get at a later rank. It's not necessarily a must-have, but it's a luxury item, is Soldier's Barricade. I'm going to go over here, and we'll look at Soldier's Barricade and look at the, um, the values of it because we can't look at it in-game because it's weird. Soldier's Barricade, so you increase... You, it's, it's essentially flat mitigation, I believe. So 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and 30% at max rank. 10 minute reuse, 30 second duration. Um, just great group mitigation. Um, hits everyone within 1500 range. So it's um, just a nice uh, defensive tool to use for your group. Um, so maybe get that later on. You don't have to get Soldier's Barricade 5 if you don't want to. Um, Soldier's Barricade 3 is pretty good, but the higher it is, obviously, the better. And that's going to probably do it for group RAs. You could always get a little bit of IP, maybe like IP2, just to give, like if you get nuked down, if you're the front line, um, it just gives you a little bit of help burst. If your healers can't help you out at, 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 in time, just helps them, you know, maybe get open to heal you. So maybe get like IP2. Um, IP is great for soloing, um, but for group play, 
it's a it's a luxury item pretty much the must-haves in my opinion for group plays dot nine and then whatever else is whatever you want to do you can do whatever you want um what i would do if you're finding a lot of caster groups is definitely get a lot of aom because what will happen is you'll end up being the front line on Armsman. you'll end up being the guy pushing in to interrupt the casters and if you're just super hard to kill then that's great you're doing your job if they if you're the, the deepest one in and you're like the only target they can really nuke and you have AOM 9, that's a, that's 20% secondary resist. And then you have your free second or 20, free 20% 20 secondary resist from being an arms in. That's 40% secondary resist. That's great. And then you pop Fury and you have another 50%. You're not taking any damage at that point. It's super strong. Um, so you can soak up damage all day. So that's what I like to do on arms in is get a lot of AOM. Um, if you want to go more damage, Mastery of Pain is a great option. Um, you can get some odd quickness to make sure you're around 250 quick. That's where it um, falls off at. Uh, but yeah, so for group arms in, there's a lot of stuff you can do. I would get, if, I, if it was my arms in and I was around rank 7, we can, I'd probably get debt 9 and then maybe dash defense 1 or 2 and then like AOM 7 probably or AOM 8. I don't know how many points I'd have left, but that's what I would get. And then I would probably maybe look at getting some Master of Pain and then maybe some Soldier's Barricade or some Purge or something later after that. It's up to you. For Solo, you're going to want some Purge, whatever Purge level you want. Um, the more you put points into Purge, the lower the cooldown is. So whatever you're comfortable with, Purge 3, Purge 4 for Solo might be good. Uh, things like IP, IP2, IP3 is a great um, investment because it gives you a ton of extra hit points. Um, it's a huge heal. 50% IP3, 35% uh, IP2. I uh, probably wouldn't go much higher than that. But that's a good way to, you know, just give yourself a ton of hit points back. Um, soloing, I would go master your pairing for sure. If you find yourself pulling out your sword and shield a lot and meleeing with your one hand, maybe get some master blocking. But master pairing is going to help you in your one-handed stance and your, your pole arm or two-hand stance or weapon selection. So it's always going to be effective, master your pairing. Um... Yeah, other than that, some Master Pain for damage. Maybe you get Soldier's Barricade if you find yourself needing extra mitigation. And that's going to be about it for RAs, I think. Um, I probably missed something or some point I need to, to make, but we'll go ahead and move on to MLs. The two options you get are Warlord and uh, Battlemaster. If you're soloing, you pretty, or sorry, if you're um, grouping, I think Battlemaster is way better than, uh, than Warlord. But if you're soloing, you might can get away with Warlord. Um, Battlemaster has its merits, but Warlord's pretty dang good for solo and small men. Uh, the main thing in Battlemaster is Bodyguard. You put this on a friendly uh, ally in your group, and if they stand still and you're close to them, they cannot be hit by melee, like at all. Like they don't even swing on them. So they can. what you can use this for is to Bodyguard a Thurg, and melee cannot interrupt them, so they can just go nuts. Um, they can still be erupted by spells and things of the sort, but melee won't hit them or interrupt them. Um, so that's great. Uh, grapple is another really good ability. It's mainly used for peeling. Um, it stuns you for 12 seconds and it roots your target for 10, but in that rooted state, they can't be damaged by melee, but it's an unbreakable root. Um, so your casters can just nuke the heck out of them for 10 seconds and they can't move. Um, it's good for setting up damage. Like if, say, someone's running out of range and you need to stop them so your casters can keep nuking them, grapple them there. Or if, say, like a Zerker's windowed and you want to grapple them, it's not going to allow them to melee either. They can't be meleeed and they also cannot melee. So it's going to be great. Uh, it's a great way to stop things like a window or if a caster's at like 10% and bodyguard's not going to kick in in time and you just have to stop that damage immediately and it's one tank, grapple them. It's great. Um, love grapple. Don't be afraid to use it. Also, you can grapple a charge tank. They'll still be able to run around and move, but they can't melee it in that in that mode once they're once they're grappled. And once their charge fades, they'll they'll come to a stop for the duration, the remaining duration of grapple. Uh, things I want to get to now: things like power leak. Power leak. Um, what that does is it's a, a melee style. We'll hit it here. But it applies, and you can't see it on these dummies for some reason. But it applies a PBOE power drain with a 350 radius uh, this is great um, against things like vamps where you need to power leak them to take away their power so they can't claw as much um, it's also super good when you're trying to interrupt through bodyguard or interrupt in an area a 350 degree area because that power drain 
not only drains 70 power per hit, but it also applies an interrupt. So that's super good. Say you're uh, you're trying to fi you're fighting a, a druid with a hero stuck to it, bodyguarding it, and you can't hit the druid. If you can land power leaks on the hero, it's going to interrupt that druid. Um, it costs a ton of endurance, but if you have a friar in your group with um, the introduction spell, you'll be able to pretty much spam these. Um, but you can see it costs 50% endurance, but it has a nice effect to it, so you'll be using that. Sapping Strike does the exact same thing. It just drains endurance instead of power. Still interrupts just the same. Uh, Fault Finder, pop that if you're killing the Speed Warp or fighting a door. It's going to give you bonus damage to, to Siege type stuff. Um, Essence Flames is a high endurance cost style. It gives you a buff that allows you to have a little Essence DD on it. Um, I'm not going to go too much into these because... I'll probably make another video just on Battlemaster bio styles later. Um, but I'm just going to hit over some, some high points. Essence Dampen is a uh, a style with a PBOE effect. It's a PBOE Dex Quick debuff. Um, it interrupts just the same as Power Leak um, that Dex Quick debuff does. And the follow-up style to that is a PBOE Shear. Shear is any buff, a random buff. Even if um, you're fighting like a, a Druid who's buffed himself, it'll still Shear those buffs. It can even Shear things like a caster's... Uh, like base AF shield or whatever, their uh, little casted ABS shield. So it's really strong for that. Um, so yeah, maybe think about using those. They interrupt as well, so they're a great way to interrupt an area or interrupt your BG. If you're flying in a keep for a siege and there's just a clump of people, like PBAing and casting and healing, if you hit them with one power leak, it's going to interrupt a 350 radius um, and just cause some havoc in there. So think about using that. Next we have throw weapon. And this is one of my favorite styles, I think, because what this does is you throw your weapon, and if you hit someone, then it does some damage, and it disarms you for like 10 seconds. So as you see, we throw a weapon, now we appear, we have recovering weapons, last for 10 seconds, we can't do anything with our weapons for 10 seconds, we're just bumbling. The interesting thing about this is, one, it does decent enough damage, 590 was our cap, um, not too far off our uh, anytime style damage, actually. Um, the big thing is, it's a ranged attack, so it's, you know, I just threw weapon from here. This is, I don't know, a thousand radius, seven hundred radius, or range. So it's decent range. The the most interesting part though is if you throw your weapon and you hit a, a Brilla Guard or a Blade Turn, it'll kill that Brilla Guard and, and or bust that Blade Turn. Also, if it hits a Blade Turn, then it's gonna erupt the caster that you're hitting, but you're not gonna fumble your weapon. So if you're fighting a group with PBT or you know that someone you're about to hit has Blade Turn and you're running up to them. You can use your throw weapon. I'm not going to actually do it because it'll um, drop my weapon with the fumble. So I can throw my weapon. It's going to say your hit was absorbed by a magical barrier, but it's not going to give me the fumble, and then I can come up to them and just slam them because they're not going to have a blade turn because I, I, I popped it when I was running towards them. So that's a super strong little tactic. Also, if you see Brill Guards, just throw your weapon at the Brill Guards. The Brill Guards will die, uh, and you won't fumble your weapon, and you won't have to deal with the Brill Guards once you get there. And if you kill a Brill Guard, there's a safe chance he's going to have a Blade Turn behind that, so you can probably throw up and again and get a nice uh, little Blade Turn pop. This is great in groups when you're fighting PBT because this is a great way to interrupt consistently. So if you're fighting a Suppression RM or a group with a Warden, you can just throw up in like all the time. Well, you, you have you got to be like halfway smart about it, but it's more likely than not they're going to have PBT up. Um, so you can throw up and it's going to hit that Blade Turn. It's going to cause an interrupt. And so you don't have to be on top of them or cast a seal disease or anything to interrupt the spell. You can just throw a weapon. Um, and that's going to do it pretty much for Battlemaster. There's some other little nifty things within each style probably, but we'll get into that in a different video, I think. If you have any questions about anything, I can, I can always answer them in the comments or rush that video if it's important. Uh, next thing we're going to get into is your CL abilities. I don't have any CLs trained on this. such an old character, and I think there's a force respect. But I would definitely get seal disease. Um, that's a 1,000 range, 2.2 second cast time, single target disease. You can get an AE version. It's not worth it. But I always get the single target disease. And for Armzen, I would definitely get something like a 1,500 range sealed nuke. Uh, that's going to allow you to interrupt from 1,500 range. Um, yeah, you can pull out your crossbow if you want, but um, I don't think it's quite 1,500 range as we, as we saw earlier. It's a little bit less than that. So that's going to be your highest range interrupt, just some sort of sealed nuke. I think there's a two second cast time CL nuke at 1500 range. So think about getting something like that. You can always get an AWE nuke. Um, that's great for clearing Zopets off your caster friends. If you're running around and some guy's getting chased by like three Zopets, you can just hit him with an AWE seal nuke. 
Uh, I think there's an AOE snare nuke that kills Zopet. So think about using that. Other than that, it's up to you. But for sure, get CL disease and probably at least one 1500 range nuke. Other than that, fair game. I have a CL ability video you can look up to kind of see a uh, overview of most of the CLs. Um, so that's going to pretty much do it for what you can spec on armsmen's, whether it be uh, RAs or uh, CLs or skills. Uh, there's a two-handed line. Um, if you want any information about that, instead of me going over all of it in this video, go to my Paladin video because I, I talk about it in full in there. It's the same line for armsmen and Paladin, same thing. So maybe look at that video and just go like fast forward to the two-hand segment of it. Um, next, I'm going to talk about some template ideas. Things I think are like must-haves in a group template or things I, I would like to have. Uh, first and foremost for a group template, Cloak of the Loyal Arms is so good because you have two options, two things you can use here. You can use a use that gives you 40% to all secondary magic resist for 15 seconds. So if you're getting nuked and your fury's down, you can pop this and be super tanky again. Um, if you're getting nuked and stuff like that, it doesn't really work well against melee unless you're using magic weapons. The second ability is really strong is this little uh, ignore blade turn uh, use. And I don't exactly know how long this lasts because it's, it's, it's a pulsing thing that lasts seconds, but I don't know how long the uh, the pulse lasts. It's a few minutes at least. Uh, so if you're going into a fight, pop this and you'll, you won't you will have to deal with blade turns. That's super strong uh, because a good way to counter arms when it's casters is have PBT, a dex quick, and a hasty buff. Since you're swinging something that's a 5.7 or 6.0 speed weapon and you're debuffed, you're, you'll get one hit in every now and then, but PBTs are going to be blocking most of your swings. So it's really hard to do a lot of damage against PBT and haste and dex quick debuffs on an armsman. This at least eliminates the PBT version or portion of that so you can get through some of the mitigation. Um, also helps with peeling. If you're in a peel war with the hero and you're both trying to slam each other and you both have blade turn, if you have this thing going, then you don't have to worry about blade turn. So all, if you if you if he lands a slam on you and it gets absorbed by blade turn, then that's great. And then you have a chance to block again or whatever. But if you get through a shield and his parry and everything, and you land the slam, if you have this up, your your attack probably would have gotten hit by blade turn. But this penetrates it, so you obviously win the slam more, and then you can side snare him and run off. And then he's moving slow, you're not. You have a huge advantage, um, at least versus him. So it's great in the peel war. Great when you're doing damage. Just an all-around great little, uh, great little bonus, but you do have to give up your uh, your magic resist if you do decide to use that. So it's a little bit offense versus defense there. Um, another thing I would definitely get in a group template is something with a uh, little magic resist buff, whether it be a ring like Ring of Arcane Jesters, uh, this Bracer of Arcane Commands. I think some of the uh, the uh, the Vigilante belts have it, like the Curative belt. I think has it has a 10% magic resist. I think there's a, a cursed item or two from the Ari Light store or whatever that has it as well. I think there's a ring. Um, I would definitely put this in there because this just gives you another 10% secondary resist. If you see here, look at my heat deal. You can see the 40% uh, secondary resist. But if I use this, use two, it'll go up to 50%. So now I have 50% secondary resist, really strong. Um, you can also do the same thing with the melee charge, except for the melee charge actually gives you 10% primary resist, which is nice. Um, but I wouldn't worry about that as much. Things like Gem of the Harbinger are really good. Um, Gem of the Har no, there are other Harbinger gems now, um, but the the use on this is a single target debuff, and it debuffs the caster's cast time or casting speed by 25% for 40 seconds. So this is great if um, say you're fighting like an SM or healer and they mock, you can use this on them and they're going to be casting much slower. You can also, let's see, which one's a good, uh, okay, this is not the good melee one. Which one's a good melee one? There's a new really good one that we get on melee characters for sure. Okay. Uh, Amethyst of the Harbinger, I think. Yeah. It's going to give you style damage, melee combat speed, and also 5% conversion. So that's going to make you even tankier. It's going to take whatever damage you take and convert 5% of that into healing your uh, power and endurance. And it also has the same really good um, debuff on it. So maybe look at getting something like that. Um, another really good item I would get, I think they're called the uh, Curse Blood Gauntlets. Uh, what that does is just a 25% heal use. Um, so with an armsman, that's going to be, what, 
I don't know, a thousand health once you're once you get all your your health and stuff going. Just a, a big health return, um, like a mini IP, pretty much IP one, pretty much is what it is. Other than that, it's really up to you. You can pretty much throw in whatever. Um, you want to get your quickness up to around 250, so you'll need quite a bit of quickness for that. Maybe a little bit of odd quick, um, up to you. You want to get your strength high, your con hits high, obviously your resist capped. Um, you want to get 11 to your damage type and 11 to your pull arm or two hand. You also want to make sure your TA or your TA bonuses are uh, capped. So 10% um, style damage, 10% melee damage, and 10% combat speed. I like to get conversion now too, since this is easy to get. It just makes you even more tanky. Uh, for a solo template, I would use something uh, with the heal over time chess piece. This isn't it, but something like a uh, the, the curse set chess piece has a uh, heal over time proc. The Aureolite chess piece also has a heal over time proc. There's some old freezing stuff I think that has it, if you can find some of those. Um, so I would put that in there, get some plus to parry in your solo template, uh, things like that. And your solo template, that melee resist charge is gonna be more important. So I would definitely put that in there as well. Uh, weapons you're going to want to use. I'm not super up to date on arms and weapons, but if you can find a 6.0 speed polearm, that's great. Uh, pick Slayer weapons are good. They're a little bit faster, so your damage isn't going to be quite as high, but the debuffs are really good. There's a crush debuff and an ABS debuff on this Pick Slayer polearm. Uh, the DF one's not great, but it's not terrible. You get a 10%, uh, essentially, it converts damage into to power, so that's pretty decent. Uh, last 15 seconds when it procs, and then just a 55 AF debuff. It's pretty decent defensive weapon, not a great offensive weapon, so keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, if I'm peeling, I might use the DF weapon. If I'm doing damage, I might use the Pixlayer weapon. Um, yeah, I think there's a 5.8 speed, 5.9 speed dragon weapon or something like that. But uh, yeah, do stuff like that. For soloing, uh, use like a, sh a good shield with like a heal proc or an out... Um, Ablative proc on it if you're using your shield a lot. I like the uh, Pixlayer Defender in a group because as an offensive uh, melee and magic, or might just, actually I think it's just a magic ablative, so that's really good. So if you slam someone, you might get a chance to proc a small ablative on you, and when someone nukes you, they'll get they'll nuke you for less damage. Um, so that's gonna be about it. Um, templates are really all over the place. Whatever you want to put in it, go for it. Um, daocutils.com, D-A-O-C-U-T-I-L-S.com. There's some templates on that side, I think. Um, I don't know how good they are, but check them out if you uh, have any questions about maybe a starting point for a group or solo template. Uh, if you have any more questions about Armsen, let me know. Um, I didn't talk too much about strategy uh, in this video, but you're going to be peeling a lot. And by peeling, I mean you're going to be slamming tanks and snaring them with your uh, your st styles, helping your group um that way, that frees up casters and support. You'll also be doing a bit of damage with an armsman. Like you and a paladin can train stuff down pretty quickly. Um, you don't necessarily want to train all the time, but on like little small bursts, you and the paladin can hit someone for you know five seconds or so and probably kill them if they're not getting a ton of hills. Heals, sorry. Um, you'll also be frontlining, so you'll be pushing into a group. You'll be throw weaponing, seal diseasing, um, a lot to interrupt. You'll also be sticking down casters. You're hard to kill, so you want to be kind of the focus if you're pushing into a group of casters. You don't want like a mercenary or a paladin or something to be the focus because they'll die a lot quicker than you. Um, other than that, if you have any more questions about strategy or the Armsen's role in a group or things like that, let me know. They're a pretty straightforward class. They uh, they have a few extra abilities, um, and then they have a shield and a big pole arm, and they hit people hard and they don't take a ton of damage. So that's been it for the Armsman class. Suggestions, tips, comments, anything like that, throw them in the comments. I like to, I try to respond to everything. I might miss something every now and then just because the notification messed up and I didn't see it, but uh, I try to respond to everything. Again, thanks for watching. That's been the Armsman on the Albion Realm. You guys have a good one. Thanks.